Hallelujah! I can't hear your shout of victory. Somebody! Yeah! Woo! And will you lift your hands? Father, we thank you. We give you glory. Lord Jesus Christ, we want to honor you for who you are. We have gathered around you and you alone, O oh God. As John the Baptist prayed, we pray that we may decrease so you may increase. Do good to every man and every woman who has a heart to believe. Lord, bless us. Bless those who are present in this auditorium and those who are not present here, wherever they may be watching and tuning and streaming from. I pray you bless bless us. May today be a day of victory. In the name of Jesus. Make the Holy Ghost crazy noise. Woo! I, I don't know about you. I don't have two gods. I have only one God to praise. So when I'm praising my God, I go all out. Is there anybody who's getting ready to go all out? Praise him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Give your neighbor a high five. God bless you. Please have a seat if you can. The GTG is here. The IVP is here. I want to urge all of you to please make sure that you register and you are part of it. You should not miss the opportunity. Poor means passing over opportunities repeatedly. P-O-O-R. There are people who are poor not because God has not remembered them. Spiritually, physically, materially, financially. Don't remain poor. P-O-O-R. By keep on passing over opportunities. Repeatedly. Look at somebody and say, that's not you. <laughs> so I want to urge all of you to please make sure that you register to be my personal uh, uh, guest for the upcoming IVP that begins on the 7th of September that will run down till the 9th of September. This one is the second edition of the GTG Gift Transferring Gathering. I believe that God has something for you. He will give it to you. You will be a recipient of the gift of God and you will also be a beneficiary of the gift of God. What God has for you, may you receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. I announced prophetically that uh, this weekend is a weekend of V-I-C-T-O-R-Y. Victory! Hey, I don't know who I am speaking to, but may I be a prophet over your life. May I be a prophet over your life. May I establish it in the spiritual realm over you. This week is your week of victory. You are about to kick that devil out of your yard so hard in the name of Woo. Please have a seat. God bless you. Kick that devil out of your yard. I will lead you to engage in spiritual warfare this weekend. Starting today, the law say, I should do so. Many of us are struggling because the enemy has uh, uh, all our goodies locked out. But today, we'll deal with him. If you are here or you are under the sound of my voice, I want you to get ready because there is no random. You are here by divine appointment. Something is set in heaven and it shall manifest in your life today in the name of Jesus. 
If you believe it, say I receive it. So Father, pray that you bless us, bless your word and lead us, O oh God, to a place of complete freedom, complete deliverance. Let the captives go free today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I read from the book of Luke chapter 13, verse 10 down to verse 17. I want to invite you to read with me and we do it uh, in style. One, two, and three. Amen. The ministry of Jesus Christ was uh, somehow a controversial ministry. And not because he had uh, been doing wrong continuously, but simply because what he was doing was not conventional and therefore did not uh, embrace or find the approval of those who live in his time. Not only that uh, Jesus Christ was controversial because of his doctrine, but he was also controversial because of the happenings of the miraculous in his ministry. I've been for a few years now serving God in full-time ministry, and I tell you one of the greatest hiccups that you have in jailing together with a fellow a servant of God around the world is often in the miraculous. If there is a place where the church is still not finding a common ground of understanding is in the miraculous. And that this has always been this way for many centuries. Jesus Christ had operated a miracle, a great miracle. And as God gives us the grace in a few minutes, I'll break it down. Because there is a lot of goodies in that scripture for you and for me. But I want to begin by the end, so I may give you a round, a round out idea of what I'm trying to say. Jesus Christ, after operating in outstanding miracles, family, there are miracles, and there are miracles. There are miracles, when it happens, you do not know if it's really a miracle, or if it's just uh, a coming together alignment of uh, coincidence. You do not really know if it is the panado that you took that created the miracle of the, or the hand of God. There are miracles when it happens, it leaves you confused as to who should the praise go to. Because you do not know if you have to say thank you to the bank manager, thank you to the sheriff that was kind, or thank you to Jehovah that intervened. An outstanding miracle is a miracle that stands out. It's a miracle of miracles. Is a mother of miracles. Is there anybody who's uh, thirsty for a mother of miracles? You see, when an outstanding miracle takes place, uh, there is no confusion. It's clear that this is the hand of God at work. Family, get ready. For before I drop the microphone, a miracle will happen to somebody who has faith in this place. I am not just talking about the common miracles that you are acquainted with. I am not just talking about the miracle that you had last Monday. What God is about to do is exceedingly abundantly above all you ask and hope for. 
a miracle will happen to you watching me today may you receive it in the name of Jesus now as you have a seat it is said that an outstanding miracle took place a woman was abound for many years, 18 years, and so Jesus Christ delivered her. And since I'm pointing you toward the end before uh, bringing you back to the beginning, look at the end. After the miracle took place, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the law carriers, those who are supposed to carry the gospel in this context, those who are supposed to advocate for Christ to stood against Jesus. Yeah, let me tell you, preaching may not always provoke it, but miracles. If you, if you want to provoke people's mind, if you want to upset some waters, bring in the supernatural. I say bring in the supernatural. They began to argue over the miracle turning legalistic on the one who's greater than the law Jesus they say to him there are six days of the week get yourself a miracle on, a, on one of those six days meaning Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and so forth but not on the Sabbath they do not know that they're talking to the Sabbath himself if only you knew who is Jesus. If only you knew who is Jesus. The argument will stop. They, they, they try to argue with the giver of life himself. The Sabbath. Jesus is our Sabbath. They say if you gotta be healed, be healed any other day. Not the Sabbath. Meaning that this miracle should not be founded on him. Mm. now hear this they spoke eloquently they seemingly had a backup of the law but to the eyes of Jesus Christ the theology carried no water he looked at them and said hypocrite if Jesus Christ had to walk now, he will look at them and say, hypocrite. There are many of us who are still in hypocrisy of our doctrine, trying to push things that we will not carry ourselves. We push certain principles, not for the sake of Christ, but to protect our little groups. Because you see, you feel like if I will open to the miraculous, it will defeat me because they will ask me if it is true there, why is it not happening here? And therefore, I should reject it altogether, not because it is wrong, simply because I'm trying to protect my little boutique. Oh, sorry, church. Are you hearing me? So Jesus Christ say hypocrite. Now break down the word hypocrite. Hypocrite means an actor. You are this and you live this. Meaning you, you, you are like a bet. Among the birds, we do not know if you are one. Among the mouse and the rats, we do not know if you are one. When you go and visit the bird, they say, mm-mm. You, are, you have teeth. You can't be one of us. When you go to the red, they say, you fly. You can't be one of us. And I pray that God may rescue our generation from bet and hypocrites. Mm -hmm. Now, I bring you back to the beginning because that's where we are building the foundation of the truth that will set us free. The Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Not the ideologies of men. Not the opinions of people. What sets you free is the truth. And it's the truth that you know. Lift your hand and say, reveal yourself to me. Because you got to understand that the truth is a person. 
Jesus Christ is the truth. The truth is not just a correct report. Because a correct report may also be a lie. Is a lie just correctly reported? Mm -hmm. The truth is a person. Now, the Bible says, Jesus Christ came to the synagogue. Now, the synagogue is a clear and the best representation of a local church. He came to the synagogue. In our context, we say Jesus Christ came to the local church. And as he came to the local church, he found a woman who has been there for years. This woman was planted in the local church. She was a full member of the synagogue. But right in the synagogue, the enemy was whipping her. Right there in the synagogue, the enemy has been oppressing her life. How many people have signed memberships to belong to a specific synagogue? But right in the synagogue, the enemy is walking in and knocking you right there. Today, I will allow you to knock him back. I say, we'll knock him back. Hear this. The woman was found in a synagogue. Many people think that if you are in the synagogue or in a local church, your problem has finished. The synagogue where you found solution is a synagogue where Jesus is and is freely at work. If it is just based on dogmas and routines and tradition, you will not die in church. That's why I tell you, not every church is a good church. But the mere fact that it's called a church, it doesn't make it good. It has to be founded on the principles of the Lord, on the doctrine of truth. And if it is not founded on the principles of the Lord found in our Bibles... It is not a church to go to. The word church is not uh, magical that turns evil into good. The devil can start a ministry and call this a church. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Now, if you are in a church that is not Bible based, you are in the wrong church altogether. So what do I say to you? Don't say bye. Pack and go. Mm -hmm. But hear this. This woman was found in a synagogue for 18 years. The Bible says she was burnt. And the reason why she was burnt for 18 years was because of an oppression, a demonic oppression. Somebody say demonic oppression. This woman was there, burnt. Many people come to church in many churches all around the world and they are like this. They quote scriptures like this. They sing hymns like this. They run with the offering to the stage like this. They are beaten by the devil so much so that they do not know if Jesus Christ really wants them well now or just after death. They are so beaten that they have made peace with their condition. When they speak about the misery, they do not disassociate with it anymore. They, they talk about my problem. How are you? I'm good, except of my problems. Because you see, the enemy has dealt with them. Satan, I'm angry against you. And I'm coming to get you. Satan, hear me. I am coming for you. My name is Aflu Kau. The time of mourning is over. The time of being beaten is over. The time of lying down is over. This is time for Jesus. This is time for the Lord. I want somebody to take up his weapon. Hey. I am angry. I 
and certain this message is for you wherever you may be streaming from I am coming for you I will get you I will bring shame to you I will embarrass you I will ridicule you I am coming for you you better run I said you better run have a seat here this woman was banned what a life to live it seems like those who are dead are better off than those who are living because the entire life is summarized with one word struggle struggle to live struggle to dress struggle to feed yourself struggle to go through the night struggle to see your children going away hear me today we break the backbone of struggle i said today we break the backbone of struggle who is with me i said who is with me today we break the backbone of struggle in the name of the name above every name the name of jesus the bible say the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous run into it and they are saved at the mention of his name every knee shall bow every tongue confess that jesus is lord please have a seat struggling every day you see all that was not because of god just because of the enemy many people are struggling right in the synagogue they're struggling for many years they have tried to stretch themselves up it did not work because the pain and the struggle is not natural the pain, the struggle, isn't natural. There are diabolical forces causing that oppression that is leading them to depression. Financial depression, depression in the health, simply because of a strong hand of the enemy. When somebody is bad, you may seem to be taller than him or her but you see the only reason why you are taller is because he's not in his right standing he is bent over but after the lord will stretch his back up you will realize his full height i am here to prophesy that the first will be the last and the last will be the first i try it again i'm here to prophesy that the first will be the last and the last will be the The church is not meant to be a church without power. Because if the church be a church with no power, such becomes irrelevant. For though there will be good talking and good singing, the impact of the glory of God will not manifest. We will become a platform of good moral stories that does nothing except to shape good behaviors how to dress how to speak how to relate to matters and so forth i pray that god may bring back the power to the church you shall not depart from jerusalem he say remain until you receive power when the holy ghost will come up upon you and you shall become 
witnesses unto me. Not just reporters, witnesses. You will have an encounter. You will see it and test it yourself. And you will speak about things that you know about. I was low, now I am up. I was forgotten, now I am remembered. I was sold out there. God has picked me up. have a seat. Now this woman suffered for 18 good years in a church. In a church. What did I do every Sunday? Every week they gathered. I don't know. 18 good years. She had the patience. She had the perseverance. She had settled a man. But still nothing was manifesting. There are people who have suffered long. Why? Because Jesus Christ was not there. But the day Jesus Christ walked in, solution was given. May Jesus Christ see you. May the Lord give solution to your trial. May God turn the table around. May your story today change in the name of Jesus. You are not leaving home the same way you walked in. The devil is a liar. Enough is enough. I see you mounting up with wings like an eagle. You will get there the devil like it or not. Your time to testify has arrived. For 18 years until Jesus Christ came and as Jesus Christ saw the situation of the woman, he did what the Pharisees did not do and that upset the Pharisees. The reason why it upset them for, because for 18 years they could not do what he did in a few minutes. That's why they are so upset with Aflukao because you see, I do what they cannot do. If I do what you do, we together, so there is nothing new. But if you begin to do what somebody cannot do, it upset the waters. And suddenly, they stand against you. Suddenly, they rise against you. But let me tell you, devil, your reign of terror is over. I am coming for you. I'll tear you apart. I'm your worst nightmare. I've been anointed for you. I'm upset today. I'm angry today. Today, the devil like it or not, you are going home free. I said that devil is a liar. You are going home free. You can come to my house and steal what is mine and thinks you get away with it. The devil is a liar. I am coming for you. I want my money back. I want my half back. I want my children back. I want my miracle back. I want my breakthrough back. I want my heart back. What is mine is coming back to me. The devil lock it or no. Yeah. They were so upset, so angry. Because in few minutes, Jesus performed for this woman what they had failed to do in 18 years. Family, 18 years is a long time. A little problem born 18 years ago is mature today. Yes. Your time of trouble ends tonight. Who am I speaking to? If you have faith to connect to what I'm saying, I have been sent here not to create bubbles in your spirit. I speak as an authorized mouth of God. Your time of trials and tribulation ends tonight. If the devil asks you who said it, 
answer of Lukau, servant of the living God, was sent and anointed for me. I stand and say, your trial ends today. You will beg no more. You will cry no more. In and out of hospital, no more. You will bury no love to one this year. No more bad news. I say no more bad news. I say no more bad news. In the name of Jesus. May your faith work for you today. I said, may your faith work for you. May my God honor your faith today. May your faith produce in God today. In the name of Jesus. Please, I have a seat. You see, the enemy has interfered. With the plan of God concerning you. Satan has interfered with the plan of God concerning you. The reason why many people are struggling, going from one trial to another, is not because God has designed it this way. It is revealed to us in the book of John 10.10 10, that the thief, referring to Satan himself, comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He always comes, he's in the, on the move, he's on the move. And when he comes, it's always to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Now, as a child of God, the worst mistake that you can ever make is to fall in the deceptive doctrine that tells you Satan doesn't exist. Because you see, that gives him a free ride. He will kick you and you'll not know who kicked you. The reason why today we're fighting brothers, not the devil, is because anytime somebody kicks you, you think he's your brother. But the Bible says that we do not fight and struggle with uh, uh, wrestle with flesh and blood. Are you hearing me? One of the greatest tactics of the enemy is deception. And his first deception is to make you believe eloquently that it does not exist. Don't fall for those who stand and tell you, well, the devil doesn't exist. It doesn't matter if they say it in English, in Portuguese, in, in whatever language it may be. It doesn't matter. It's deception. They may be truthful. They may have good intention. But whoever tell you, tells you that has not read his Bible correctly. In the Old and New Testament, we see the devil. The second deception of the enemy is to make you believe that although he exists, he's no longer the problem. Oh, well, you see, the devil has been beaten and defeated, and therefore the devil is no longer the problem because Jesus Christ defeated the devil. And the person who's saying that is coughing. <coughs> but you, you got to tell the person, uh, sickness has also been defeated. So where is your cough coming from? Mm -hmm. What a person is saying that uh, his uh, uh, glasses are so thick because with the gla with that glasses he can't see. He had gone through seven operations just to help him see some light, and he tells you the devil is not there. Don't become like him. L don't live a defeated life. Live a glorious life. A life of victory is a glorious life. Are you hearing me? Well, the devil, theoretically, supposed not to attack you, supposed to be far from you. It is true the devil is defeated, but it's not true that it's not a problem. The defeated devil is a problem. You gotta push him back where he belongs. You see, the mere fact that there is law does not mean that the no one will break it. That's why we have law enforcement agent. The job is to enforce the law that is already there. 
Well, the, the are laws and the laws stipulate nobody will take your car. Oh, well, brother, try it. Leave your car, leave the keys. Come back. A miracle will happen. <laughs> miracle of disappearance. Are you hearing me? The mere fact that the law is there and the devil is defeated does not mean the devil will or not. The devil is a lawbreaker. That's why the Bible calls him a thief. A thief goes and takes what doesn't belong to him. He wants to mingle in your business. He wants to interfere with the plans of God. God has destined you for greatness. He's pulling you down. You are born for grace. He's pulling you in shame. He wants to steal your promotion. That's why you have been demoted. Do not accept it today arise in authority and take what is yours this, this is not your height you are taller than this oh well you look small you know small you are just burnt god is about to stretch your back you are scared of things that are supposed to be afraid of you Every night you wake up. <laughs> Ooh, I've seen a ghost. You see, me, I don't see ghost. Ghost see me. They run out of breath. <laughs> Africa, I saw him. I saw him. Somebody had a I am anointed. Who am I talking to? Say, I am anointed. I can hear you. Say, I am anointed. There is a mama anointed here. There is a granny anointed here. There is a young boy anointed here. There is a man anointed. Who am I talking to? Somebody holler, I am anointed. Now I have a seat. So as these men argue over the restoration and the miracle of this woman, Jesus Christ clarified, he say, you hypocrites, you go and take care of your livestock, your ox on the Sabbath. But yet, you want to prevent a greater miracle to take place. He said, if it is well for that, how much more will God do for you, for this woman whom Satan kept bound for 18 years. Whom Satan, talking about a woman, kept bound for 18 years. Jesus saw that the story of this woman, the problem of this woman, is Satan. Satan kept this woman bound. She was not born like that. It is not in her DNA. It is not in her genes. It is certain. He said, if you will carry on your little business normally, how much more this daughter of Abraham? How can you be a daughter of Abraham and see my bound? How can you be a covenant daughter and still be bound? Ignorance, lack of power will do you harm. The mere fact that she was the daughter of Abraham that did not translate to a freedom. Oh, well, me, I go to church. I love God. I'm, you see, I have a Bible. I was in Bible school. You die in Bible school. I don't miss church. I'm part of the synagogue. In fact, I'm in the group of those who give bread to the poor. He said, how much more? This woman, whom Satan kept bound, a daughter of Abraham, covenant daughter, but still bound. Family, unless you use authority to enforce the law of God, the devil will take advantage of you. 
You must know from the time of John the Baptist till today, the kingdom of God suffers violent. And the violent take it by force. I'm just quoting a scripture. I'm not making what I'm saying. The violent, they take it. I don't wait for it. They take it by force. That healing, the solution to that problem, that financial miracle and breakthrough, don't wait for it. Pull your sleeve. Take it by force. Mm. Don't be molo. Call fire. Torment that devil. Kick him out of your yard. Today we are casting that devil out of our yard. We are saying, devil, your reign of terror is over. Please be seated if you can. She was a daughter of Abraham. No dispute. She was a member of the synagogue. No dispute. She was there for a long time. 18 years. No dispute. She had a tragedy, an impediment, a problem, clearly manifested. Probably they told her, just hang on there. If it doesn't work well here, maybe in heaven it shall work. Huh? Maybe they say, maybe it's the will of God. It's the doing of God. God works in mysterious way. That took your money, give him glory. Maybe it's God taking your money. He needs it for some reason. You will never know. God will give it to those who really need it more than you. Oh well, it's okay. Is it, you, you can't breathe at night? Oh, to bed. I'll be praying for you. Don't pray for me. Don't. Join me. Let's kick that devil so hard. Are you hearing me? Spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is a battle in the spiritual realm. Engaging in spiritual warfare is engaging in a battle, in a war. But not in the physical, in the spiritual. Spiritual warfare is of great importance. If it was not so, Jesus Christ would have never given us authority that's supposed to help us uh, in such a battle. But in the book of Luke, he said, Behold, I give you, not I will give you, or he said, I have given you authority. Behold, I have given you authority. Authority is power of power. It's a legal power. So it's the power of power. He said, Behold, I have given you authority to trample on the serpent, the scorpion, and over all the power of the enemy. And he said, Nothing shall by any means hurt you. When you start feeling that devil operating in your room arise remember this you can engage in spiritual warfare spiritual battle you have authority and you gotta exercise it if you do not exercise it you die the devil does not spare you out of pity the weaker you are the better for him crying does not chase away demons it attracts them in fact, I told you, the best juice demons drink is the tears of the believers. The more you cry, you will get him drunk. Say, cry more? <laughs> it doesn't matter why you cry. Somebody do this. Uh, the party is over. <laughs> Wipe away your tears. The party is over. You are called to engage in spiritual warfare. There are many people who are supposed to be very far in life. They are 
you know, dragging in the dust of the bag simply because of the powers of the enemy. There are people who are broke today, but yet God has given them a lot. They're supposed to be in abundance. They have nothing today, not because they are lazy, they had no opportunity. No, it's simply because of some forces of the enemy. There are people who today are struggling with all kinds of disease and sickness. It is my tooth, my eye, my, my, my ears, even my hair is sick, whatever it is. It might be that the enemy has a hand on you. Are you hearing me? So if you will learn to cast out devils, you will learn to enjoy that which God has given you. And let me warn you, thinking that God is God, he loves you, and he will kick that devil out for you, is not always true. Because you see, he has given you authority and wants you to exercise it. To exercise the authority that the Lord has given you is trust to him. It is having faith in him. He has given you a loaded gun. And he says every time the devil shows up, pull the trigger. That's all you do. Pull the trigger. Now, if you sit down with a loaded gun and the devil is coming and all you're saying is, Lord is coming, Lord is coming. Ooh. He will eat you alive. But the devil is a liar. We are calling fire. In fire. No, no, no. Sit down. Let me tell you this. I got to close this and we got to kick the devil. I said today, may God punish the devil. In your life, may God punish the devil. A young believer fell sick and was taken to a Congolese hospital right in the capital. It was an open world with many beds and seemingly everybody was really, really sick. Now she noticed something every midnight. Right at midnight because she would not close her eyes, she was praying. She knew that she did not belong to that hospital. It was not good for her. She did not feel comfortable. Nobody should feel comfortable in the hospital. She noticed that every midnight in that specific hospital, in the specific world where she was, the door will slowly open. And a giant, dark, ugly man will first push his head in, look look and then take a first step look look and come slowly it was not a nightmare it was not a dream it was in reality she did not see it with the eyes of the spirit she saw it with her naked eyes that every midnight the spirit man will enter ugly big and it will enter, I say it because I'm referring to that, that thing. It will enter looking as being careful of its moves. And uh, will go to the first person close by and touch. That's all that devil will do. Touch the person and start going back. Going back. And she noticed that the first time it happened, in the morning, that person was found dead. Now, the first time you can say it's coincidence. The first time you may say, maybe, maybe. But the second night, right at midnight, same time, same way, the door slowly opened. A very ugly face of a dark, tall man was seen entering. Looking left and right, moved the first step and so forth. Went to the second sleeping patient and touched the person. And when again, the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The following morning, they found the person touched dead. On the third day, during the day, 
The pastor went to see her. It was just time of visit. Sister, we came, we brought you some fruit. Are you well? See, daddy, there is something strange happening here. Daddy says, speak to me. You see, every midnight, right at midnight, the door opens and a monster enters and touches the first person. It happened twice and it may happen again. I love men of God when they are full of the anointing of God. They will speak possibilities. They will present a powerful God, not a weak God. Not a God that I will omit you after you died. I need him now, not after I'm dead. The man of God say, my daughter, that is a demon that is coming to steal. But here the Bible says, behold, I have given you authority to trample on the serpent and the scorpion and over all the power of the enemy. The devil knows he can mess up next door. Never in AMI. Because we are prophetic. We are apostolic. We are AMI. The devil knows that they're here. It will not work. Somebody had I am anointed. Please have a seat. So the pastor began to build her faith and taught her what to do. Of course, time to go. They pray together and the pastor left. The daughter of Zion was in the Holy Ghost waiting for the devil. Saying, devil, you do not know what is waiting for you. It will no longer be business as usual. I am anointed. Being impatient, checking the time. It's 9 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Oh God. Fast track the time. It's 11 o'clock. I'm waiting for that devil. Hey. Oh, oh, right there, right there. It was 5 to midnight. She pulled herself together. Push a pillow for her to look well. Right midnight, the same thing happened. The monster opened the door. A big, dark, scary, ugly head entered first. Check left, check right. And the first leg, check, check, and the second. As the monster took the second step, looked and saw the woman, eyeball to eyeball. <laughs> Yesterday you came here, you stole here. I did nothing. <laughs> Before yesterday, you did the same. I saw you with your ugly, smelling, stinking look. And I did nothing. But today, I said today, somebody had a fire. Yeah. I said today, yeah. fire. fire. Now, this is a true story. This diabolical being entered. The woman looked and said, did this. <laughs> you don't worth of my talk. Um, uh, the monster that was entering, stop. <laughs> Therefore your reign of terror is over. I will not cry anymore. I will not cry anymore. I say your reign of terror is over. You have taken too much. I want my money back. I want my miracle back. I want my restoration back. I want my breakthrough back. I want my family back. I want my children back. I want my ministry back. I want my marriage back. The woman who chased the 
devil out was the same woman who witnessed the devil operating. The change was not on the outside. The change happened inside. She now was aware of authority. She now was trained. David said, exercise my fingers to war. Now her fingers were exercised to war. The same woman who yesterday will be paralyzed in fear was testifying for the devil left the tables had turned. I am trying to speak to you. If you will hear the voice of God tonight, you the same person the devil beat yesterday. You the same person the devil took advantage of yesterday. You are the very same person that cried tears. You have been sent in and out of hospital. Your money taken. Your relationship messed up. Your future denied. You will be the same person who will exercise authority and command that demonic power to go and so shall it be in the name of Oh, may I ask those of you who have strength to stand up, stand up and let us embark on spiritual warfare. Unless you are not physically strong, you will become now. All of us stand up and if you're watching me, you can do the same. Stand up in power. I want you to command every demonic force that kept you bound to leave you and a miracle will happen to you. Begin to pray. Speak to God. Rakata. Rosoto. You have power. Exercise power. Exercise power. Satara Baba Baba Soto. You have authority. Command that devil to leave your family, to leave your life, to leave your children. Command that devil to go, to go, to go. Your reign of terror is over. Sickness and disease aren't yours. May God give you the strength. May God give you the strength. May you have victory. May God give you victory today. May God give you victory today. May God cause your enemies to fall before you. No turning back, no turning back, no turning back. Your time has come. Your moment has arrived. The time of your victory. Devil, your reign of terror is over. Baraba kantara baba. Mozoto robo sete. Maya Katarraba Katarraba Zete Yo Sotorobo Salababa In the name of Jesus Now lift your hands if you can hear me Say in the name of Jesus I take authority Over every flying devil Every running devils, every creeping devils, every walking devils, every demon released against my life, I take authority. Devil, your reign of terror 
in my life is over. I command you now. Back and go. Back and go. In Jesus name. I destroy today. Every work of the devil. I destroy today. Every evil altar. Of witchcraft. Of wizards. In Jesus name. Every plans of the devil against my life be destroyed now in Jesus name. Whatever is done by the devil against me, against my finances, against my relationship, against my work, against my plans, against my family, against my health. Be destroyed now. Be destroyed now. Be destroyed now. In Jesus' name. Every evil power fighting my progress now. Every evil power. The army of the enemy fighting me now. I call on fire. May the fire of God consume you all. I say, Fire! 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 May the fire of God consume you in the name of Jesus. Spirit of no progress. The blood of Jesus is against you. Spirit of stagnation. The blood of Jesus is against you. I destroy your maneuvering. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I am not bent. I am straight. I am not burned. I am straight. I will serve God. I will love God. I will obey God. I will follow Jesus Christ. Devil, you will not stop me. You will not stop me. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ will be glorified in my body, in my soul, in my spirit, in the name of Jesus. I am free. I am free. I am free in Jesus' name. Now, I want you to have a seat in the same spirit. Keep on praying. I just want an opportunity to pray for you. Keep on praying. Have a seat and keep on praying. For God loves you. He cares for you. Ramamama set